Alright, what's up everyone? So, today, we're going to be discussing the question at hand, bro. And that is, do games need stories? Well, I could tell you, you know, right off the bat, that according, you know, if you're a casual, then yeah, you know. If you ask, a ca if you ask like, any casual gamer, do games need stories? They'll fucking say yes in a goddamn heartbeat, dude. And you know what? They won't just say that games need stories, but they should actually prioritize the game. That you know that should be the you know, that should be the fucking priority, dude. Because you know I've said it before. No need to really ramble on about it, but casual gamers they don't want games, right? They want a bunch of fucking movies, dude. They, they don't they don't want to play a game. They actually hate it when they have to actually take control of the character and actually do some shit. They just want to sit there and put the control down and just watch a fucking cutscene, dude. Oh man, sad reality, dude. Sad fucking reality, but... Yeah, you know, casual gamers most certainly want fucking, uh, want story, dude. I guarantee that if you, if you didn't have cutscenes, these people probably wouldn't even fucking play it, dude. They're fucking, you know, they're not real gamers, dude. They're fucking... They're a goddamn, uh... They're fucking imposters is what they are. They're fucking imposters. They're goddamn liars, bro. Absolute fucking liars. Seriously, they're, they're so deceptive and shit. You can't call yourself a gamer when you have the mentality of those fucking casuals, dude, that, you know, just don't give a shit about gameplay, but... You know, if you ask me, dude, like, do games need cutscenes? Like, it depends, right? It depends what game it is. It depends what game it is, you know, if it's a game like Doom, hell no, that shit don't need fucking story, dude. Who the hell plays Doom for the fucking story at all, you know? Games like that don't need fucking story, but a game like Resident Evil, for example, yeah, you definitely need a story in there, dude. Because not only is it just, you know, it just adds to the game, it's just cool, you know, just to the story and shit, the lore of the characters, but it adds to the horror, you know, the characters and the, the backstory of the mutants and the fucking enemies and shit, the horrifying beings, it actually is important to have lore and, and story in there. You know, the Resident Evil have a lot of good characters. Well, they used to at least, not really anymore, but, you know. Ah oh, man, that's the subject for another fucking video. Because, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fucking shitty uh, characters in Resident Evil nowadays. Ruined by Capcom. Absolutely ruined by Capcom. But yeah. But the, the, the main problem is, is that we don't need to just completely scrap fucking cutscenes from games. We just need to keep them to a minimum. It's that simple. It's that simple, dude. Just like it was back in, like, PS2 days and stuff like that, dude. PS2 had a great balance of cutscenes and gameplay. Cutscenes in those games didn't prioritize the game. They were basically just a nice little break from the action. For example, in like God of War 2 or some shit, you know, you'd go, you know, you'd go fucking quite a while with a lot of high action gameplay, a lot of fucking encounters and shit, fast paced fucking action, and then, you know, after a little while you get like a little break, dude, enjoy some story shit, enjoy some of the lore, right? Because if you're just doing non-stop fucking action, you might get a little bit burnt out, dude, you might get a little bit tiresome, like with Devil May, like with uh, Devil May Cry. You gotta find the balance with, with the fucking cutscenes, dude. Don't fucking go overboard with that shit. That's the problem with games nowadays, is that they go way too overboard with the story, dude. Just look at any modern day PlayStation exclusive, dude. You know, that, that, that speaks louder than words right there. That speaks louder than words. Every fucking cutscene is way fucking, way too long, just you know, fucking drawn out beyond fucking hell, dude. And, um, just elongated as fuck, dude. Like, why do cutscenes need to be like five, ten minutes, dude? Keep them short and sweet, dude. Just short and sweet cutscenes. Bloody hell. That's what we need to do. Just keep them fucking short, dude. Don't elongate them, and don't fucking throw them in every fucking two seconds as well. It becomes so obnoxious so quickly when they do this, dude. Fucking uh, game that I played recently, Ghost of Tsushima. This is that is a perfect example 
of how not to do fucking cutscenes, dude. And do you know what's even worse about that game? Is that you can't skip the cutscenes. <laughs> dude, what fucking genius thought that was a good idea, dude. Whoever that person is, fucking fire them, okay? They have no right developing fucking games, dude. They should be fucking scrubbing toilets in a fucking nearby McDonald's or some shit, and, you know, at the fucking closest KFC. They have no right making fucking video games. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't. They, they don't want to make video games. They want. They want to make fucking movies. There's nothing worse. You know, it, it's bad enough when you have fucking, you know, drawn out fucking cutscenes and shit. Way too much fucking law shoved down your throat. But it's even worse when they force you to fucking watch them. Could you imagine that on fucking subsequent playthroughs? Imagine that for speedrunners. Imagine that fucking incredibly long fucking introduction on Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be that bad on, uh, you know, as a speedrunner, but... My goodness, dude. Imagine having to sit for that shit every fucking time. Oh, man. I feel bad for speedrunners, dude, but you know what? They put themselves through it. So you can't, you know, they've all got themselves to blame, right? But yeah, dude. Get the fuck out of here, man. Stop making your cutscenes too long. Stop fucking making them... Stop, um, you know, having an overabundance of them, and don't fucking, you know, force us to watch them, make them skippable. Because some people just don't care about fucking cutscenes, I fucking don't. Certain games, I just don't give a shit about cutscenes. It's just how it is. This isn't like, you know, ga you know games you actually used to have, like, interesting stories that were actually, like, intriguing to, you know, actually made you want to pay attention to them. But nowadays, Mike, what is it with fucking stories, dude? I don't understand how they put so much effort, so much emphasis on story in video games, yet they're so fucking boring. How the fuck do you do that? I, I don't get that. How do you spend so much money, so much time, so much effort, you know? You neglect the gameplay in order to focus on the gameplay, uh, on the story, yet you still fuck up the story. How do you do that? How do you do that, dude? I really do not understand that, bro. The fuck, dude? You had one job. You had one fucking job, dude. That's like being given the task of, like, looking after a fucking... A, a fucking, I don't know, a toddler or some shit. And then letting him get fucking, you know, letting him run off in the in, in the street and get killed by a fucking car, dude. Like, how do you do that? You had one fucking job, dude. You're not looking after several toddlers, you know. A lot of multitasking and shit, a lot of different fucking things to do. You had one objective, okay? Prevent the toddler from running into the road and get him hit, uh, get himself hit by a fucking truck, dude. How hard is that to fucking handle? Like, come on. It's fucking ridiculous, dude. With how much fucking effort and time and shit they put into these stories. These stories should be fucking masterpieces, dude. You know, like fucking top quality fucking movie production, dude. You know, fucking incredibly well-written characters, incredible backstories, and great fucking writing and shit, great dialogue. But, nah, it's always, it's always the same shit. It's always some... Fucking brain dead, mind numbingly boring, repetitive garbage, dude. It's always the same plot, dude. It's always like some fucking, um, you know, some sort of like um, Joel and Ellie type relationship, you know, like I said in the other fucking video, dude. Every fucking game has to have that nowadays. You've got to have some sort of emotional bond between like a, between like a, 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 a man and like a child. Or like a man and a woman or some shit, you know? Either that or it's some fucking political shit, dude. Oh man, the, dude, the fucking political shit is fucking awful, dude. Seriously, it's fucking crazy, dude. I mean, just look at Far Cry 6. Look at Last of Us 2, you know? There's probably others that I'm missing, dude, but I don't even want to think about it because it makes me sick to my stomach, dude. It really does. That's all that, that's all that games are nowadays. It's just a way for them to, to push shit on us that we don't fucking want. Or at least, I don't fucking want. Do I want fucking emphasis on story? Nope. Do I want politics in my video games? Nope. Do I want boring fucking games? Nope. Do I want fucking shitty fucking contentless fucking half-assed fucking low-effort remakes? Nope. 
But you know, it's just the state of gaming right there. And the people to the blame, as I say, dude, it's not the developers, it's the consumer base, dude. Think about it. If somebody offered to give you money for fucking pissing in their mouth, are you just gonna refuse that? You know? Why would you refuse that, dude? It's easy fucking money, right? Why would you need to put effort into making money where you could just do something so effortless? Perfect example of that is like OnlyFans pages, you know? Like all those fucking, uh, all those fucking e-girls and shit making these uh, OnlyFans accounts. Think about it. Why would these women go out and get real jobs, you know? Jobs that actually require a lot of time, a lot of fucking effort, you know? They make you tired and shit, long hours. For minimum wage, for low, for low pay, uh, low pay. Why, why would they do that when they could just fucking make an account on OnlyFans and just take pictures of their fucking asses and the tits? Think of, you know, why? Why would they do that? It's just natural human instinct, dude. It's natural human instinct to just take the easier path. Why are you gonna do the harder thing for less money? Why are game developers gonna, you know, put time and effort? Into fucking games to you know to give it you know into giving us a fucking quality product when they can just take the easy route, especially when the consumer base is so fucking um, you know so accepting. They're so accepting, right? They don't demand quality. They don't have to try, right? They don't have to fucking try. So why bother, right? Why fucking bother? I think all of us would fucking do that, right? You know, the developer's main, you know, number one goal is to make money at the end of the day. It's just like microtransactions, you know? Why do you think microtransactions exist? Because the dumbasses who fucking um, buy them. You know, it's, it's simple. People complain about microtransactions, you know, acting like it's so fucking hard to get rid of them. But you know what? It's a simple fucking, simple solution. Put away your mother's credit card and quit buying it. It's that simple. Do you think they're going to continue to sell something that doesn't actually sell? No, obviously not. Do you know when like a, a food company, right, comes out with a new, a new type of chocolate or a new type of ice cream or some shit, right? Do you think they're going to continue to develop and sell ice cream, uh, that ice cream? That product, if it doesn't sell, if it just gets bad reviews, you know, people don't fucking like the taste. Do you think they're going to continue to manufacture that product? No, dude. They're going to fucking scrap it and work on something else. Because that's how business works. It's all down to the consumer base. You want to get rid of microtransactions? Don't buy them. You want better fucking games? Stop pre-ordering them. You want fucking remakes? You know, that don't have content cut? Quit buying them. Tell Capcom to go fuck themselves. It's simple as shit. But, the people to blame are the community. They are, it is the consumer base. They killed gaming. Developers didn't kill gaming. I'm not over here defending the developers. You know, they, you know, fuck them just as much as the next guy. But if we're looking at it factually, it is the consumer base's fault why gaming sucks. 100% their fault. The reason why games used to be so good is because people used to actually demand quality. They used to demand quality. I mean, look, Resident Evil is a perfect example of this. Do you know back when Resident Evil 5 came out, people were fucking disgusted by that game. People were fucking not happy, right? They weren't happy with the direction that they took. Same with Resident Evil 6. Same with all those fucking shitty Resident Evil games. But nowadays, Capcom are praised like a fucking god. They're praised like fucking gods that can't, that are just untouchable. That make fucking, you know, masterpiece, uh, masterpieces. Because the, the audience has fucking changed. It isn't critical, pe you know, people that actually criticize the game because they actually. They actually love the series deep down. Think about it. A real fan of a series would actually criticize a game because they want the series to be good. 
You know, as much as I fucking hate Capcom and I hate Resident Evil nowadays, deep down, I love the series. M well, the old, the old games at least. I want the series to be good. Do you think I'm set over here like, yeah, you know, I want this shit. I want this game to be bad. I want these remakes to have no content and to fucking be, you know, just shitty fucking half ass remakes, dude. No, it don't work like that, you know? Fucking dumbass fanboys seem to think that if you have an opinion, if you actually criticize a game, if you're honest, you're a hater. Dude, how the fuck do you work that out? How do you work that out? I actually want the game to succeed. I'm saying these things because I want it to be as good as it can be. So the fact that you just accept it and act like it's just perfect with no flaws, it's actually the other way around. You're the real fake fans. Because, you know, you ruin the, the series. You ruin the potential of the series. It could be a fucking absolute masterpiece of a series if you actually took the time to criticize it. To let it, you know, to let the developers know that there's fucking problems. Let them know that th let them know that, th that there's problems with RE2 Remake. With RE8. But now you just act like they're fucking perfect games. It's fucking embarrassing, dude. The consumer base needs to fucking change. People need to get off their fucking hands and knees and quit opening their mouths and just accepting it right in the back of their throat. Stand up to the fucking, the, the horrible corporations, these terrible companies. You know, don't give in to these fucking people. Stand your ground. You know, tell them, you know what, fuck you dude, I'm not gonna fucking pre-order. I'm not gonna buy this fucking shitty game. I'm gonna be fucking, I'm gonna be smart. And I'm actually gonna fucking do my research. I'm not gonna jump headfirst into the deep end. Into the, in, into the shallow end. It's simple as that dude. Simple as fucking that. And that could be said for anything in the world. Quit buying all these shitty games. Quit pre-ordering them, okay? Fuck these developers. They can go to hell, dude. They don't deserve our fucking money. If they want our money, then they have to fucking earn it, dude. And they sure as hell ain't earning it by making fucking movie games. By making fucking shitty fucking contentless games. Making fucking low effort fucking games. But yeah, this game, this, this rant kind of became about multiple things. It started off with me just talking about like uh, cutscenes and shit and story, but it kind of became something more than that. I might have to name it something else, dude. But yeah, this is a fucking long ass video, dude. Good lord, man. Oh man, these, video, these rant videos get out of hand sometimes. They become way too fucking long, but... Yeah, you know what? If anybody made it to the end of this video, dude, thank you very much, okay? You are fucking a legend, dude. Not many people probably make it to the end of these videos, especially these long ones, but I really appreciate it, man. You see, you, you guys are the true supporters, man. Let me know, okay? If anybody made it to the end of this video, let me know, okay? So then I can thank you personally, dude. You know, so then I know that you're fucking, you're, you know, you're a fucking beast like that, man. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, dude. I appreciate it, man. Hope you'll enjoyed. Sorry for the fucking long ass rambling video, but you know what? More is better, right? Nothing wrong with more. But anyway, hope y'all enjoyed. Hope y'all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, in a bit, people. Sayonara.